Hello everyone, welcome to Slip Joint Sawyer. Before we jump into today's video, I just want to give a good shout out to my friend Mikey over at Baldi's Blades. Very new to sort of long form videos, he put out his first one end of sort of last week. I know he's planning to do some more long form videos this week, so please go check him out. Uh, channel Baldi's Blades, I will link it in the description below. Get in touch with him and I'm sure he'll be kind enough to send you a sticker if you're after one. But yeah, please go check him out, he's a wonderful guy. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a knife from Bear & Sons today, and this is only my, really my second knife from Bear & Sons. Um, it comes in their standard style box. You've got Bear & Son on the front, cutlery, the sort of bear paw on this little shield. Um, we've got the black and sort of a, a dark grey coloured. You can see this one was made in the USA. We have um, Everyone Respects a Bear, crafted in Jacksonville, Alabama. Of course, you've got the Bear & Sons logo here again, and made in the USA. And then pretty much similar on the other side, just so you get their address, um, full lifetime warranty, and then a warning about cancer, but only in California for some reason. And then we also have a sticker on here that the mold number is 5180, and this is the genuine stag four inch large Barlow. And uh, it just says, handle with care, products are sharp, limited lifetime warranty, bits and pieces like that. And then on the, again, on the end, you have the barcode with the model number. So we'll pop the box to one side. Inside that then you get a little bit of paperwork from Bear and Sons themselves. Very sort of basic, just says thank you for your purchase, check out the warranty online, register your product online, and a QR code you can scan. And you've got their two sort of companies there, Bear and Sons Cutlery and Bear Ops. Nice little presentation baggy the, the knife comes in, this nice sort of synthetic bag. Um, I get why they do that, it keeps you protected on the way to it, but if you're like me, this will probably go back in the box and it'll never get used again, but it is a nice touch for them to include that. And then here it is, the four inch Barlow from Bear and & Sons, and this is in the genuine India stag. As I mentioned, the four inch Barlow, so it's obviously four inches closed. We have this really well done jigged stag. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. I really like the way they've done that. Really nice color transitions as well. You've got the nice burn areas lighter colors and then the really dark in the middle as well and they've matched both sides pretty pretty accurately as you know as far as i'm concerned a little bit lighter on the on the darker patches on this side but overall very happy with the bone on this i think they've done a great job with that as it's a barlow then we do have the elongated bolsters which is about two-thirds of the length of the knife sort of the standard thing we would see when looking at a barlow knife Pins on here then, you can see we've got nickel silver pins and of course the bolster is nickel silver as well with no sort of lines, nothing pinched, just rounded off but sort of squared off as well at the ends. Transitions are pretty nice, can kind of catch my nail on this one a little bit but it's very very minor. Pins aren't immaculately flush but as you'd expect with jigged it's all up and down all over the place so you're not going to get them absolutely perfect but none of them are sticking up enough to sort of catch my fingers on. It's smooth enough that I can rub my finger over it and not really feel them. Same as well on the pile side of the knife. They do stick up the tiniest amount, but not enough to sort of cause me any sort of concerns. Uh, the bolster is done a bit better on this side, so there's no, no stepping at all. One thing I will note as well, the one I did get unfortunately is a little bit cracked at the bottom here, so that would have been nice to see if they'd have picked that up in their QC checks. You can see it only goes as far as the pin, it doesn't go any further, so... I didn't really want to return it. I was sort of happy to carry and use this as that's what my sort of purchase was for this. I was sort of intrigued at the pattern. I know a lot of the US guys have been raving about this knife and I wanted to sort of get one in hand to see what it was like. Blade centering on this one then is a little bit off. You can see off to the pile side, but it's not touching and you can actually move it central. But as soon as you open it and close it again, it does move back to, to the position it's in. So I would have liked to see the the centering a little bit better but it's not rubbing and that's the main thing I look for in a user knife and that's what this is going to be for me. Take a look at the construction then, looks like we have uh, stainless back springs and spacer. You can see there, can't really see any gapping on this at all. All looks pretty tight to me, a little bit of stepping up here, I'm just got like the spring is kind of stepping up, you can kind of see where the light's hitting it just here but nothing too major. Covers are all fitted really nice. There's no sort of concerns around the corners. They all fit perfectly. It's been hafted really well, especially for a handcrafted USA made knife. 
can't feel anything sharp. The back of the tang has been sort of rolled over as well, so there's no concerns with that. Nothing sharp as far as I can feel, it all feels pretty great. Let's take a look at the blade. So half stop, you see we have the Bear and Sons tang stamp down there. It looks to be a little bit on the wonk, but again, I mean, that's really minor. It's nothing really for me to complain about. It's going to be a user knife and I'm going to abuse this thing and see what it can take. But we do have, it's advertised as a 3.03 inch blade. So that is technically over the UK limit, but I'm sure with a couple of sharpenings, this will go down. You'll be able to get it within that sort of three inch. But if we look at the tip to tang then, sort of lining up with the furthest part out of the bolster here, you can see how very little it is over that three inch mark, but the cutting edge is about 2.75 inches. And they do advertise this as a sheep's foot blade, but what I would like to mention, if I put it down on the line, you can see that there is a curve to the blade. Now, for me, a sheep's foot blade would be perfectly straight, uh, I'm not sure if that's just my example of everyone's example as a curved blade like this, but again, it's just personal preference. Manufacturers will call the blade what, whatever they feel like it is. And for me, it's close enough to a sheep's foot to call it a sheep's foot blade. Edge, pretty uniform, maybe a little bit heavy up here by the sharpening choil. And pretty uniform on this side, no complaints really. What I will say is it didn't come dull, it just needed a really good strop. And now I've done that, the blade is razor sharp really nice point on the end as well and one of my favorite things about this we're looking at 1095 carbon steel one of my favorite steels i would say behind d2 it doesn't hold as much of an edge as d2 but you just gotta love the patina that 1095 takes you can see we have a modern style long pull at the top here nice aggressive swedging which is the kind i prefer rather than the sort of the laziness into a swedge and by that, I mean if the slope was very sort of gradual into a swedge, I'm not a huge fan of that. I much prefer the sort of straight lines and the angles for that swedge to come about. And you can see it does go down to a nice sort of fine point on the end as well. A little bit of stepping as well when it's open, but nothing major. You can kind of hear my nail catching on that, but it's nothing to sort of write home about. It's comfortable in the hand. And for a four inch closed barlow, I mean, I thought this would be too big for me, but... I think this is going to be a pretty decent carry and I'm looking forward to carrying it. When it's open, little tiny bit sharp, well, sharp is probably the wrong word, but I'm probably going to run a diamond file just down there to take the edge off. It's not like cut your shelf sharp, but when you've got that in a, in a grab, you can kind of feel it on the inside of your fingers here. So I'm probably going to roll that back and see if it's a bit more comfortable with that. But we do have a nice sharpening troil as well. Half stop really nice walk and talk and i've opened and closed this a few times and i've got no concerns with blade wrap you can open it with the long pull nice and easy or if you want to open it even easier you can just pinch at the top which is probably what i will do to open this knife but for me i'd say the pulls right about a seven probably about a six and a half and then when you get to the half stop it's it's definitely a seven overall pretty impressed couple of quality control issues that um, hopefully they do iron out when they bring out more of these these barlows and maybe hopefully they do more patterns as well in their US factory uh, mainly the cracked bone I'd like to see that get nailed out I can I can live with a bit off center that's not that's not the issue to me but there is no blade play when it's open at all it is rock solid fantastic action you can pick these up for about 50 55 pounds in the UK from Cyclair knives and tools where I picked up mine from but that's going to do it really for my gut review guys I really hope you enjoyed this it's the review of the Bear and Sons four inch Barlow in the genuine India stag the model number for that again is 5180 please be sure to like subscribe and ring that bell for notifications and I'll catch you in the next one peace out